Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Zach Drew. And I am Josh Peck. This is a deep show. It's actually a difficult show for me today. I was so moved this week in um, the research. Our kids are under attack. They're under attack from every angle. We live in a world that sees the innocence of a child, and instead of seeing it for the wonderful gift from God that it is, instead it wants to destroy it. It wants, they want to butcher the children. And no, I'm not just talking about in the womb. I'm talking about outside of the womb and completely shred it apart. To prove this point, we're going to be looking at one news report that honestly broke my heart. What you are going to see today will probably bring you to tears. And honestly, it needs to, because this insanity has gone too far for too long. I'm a research man. This is what I do for, for a, a calling. It's more than just a job and a career. It's, it's a calling. And this week, you know, we know that the left is mutilating our children. The trans agenda is mutilating our children. But to know it is one thing, but to actually see some of the children and um, the conflict they're going through because they're insane, demonically possessed, liberal parents. It's like if they think that they possibly could have a gay kid, it's like, let's cultivate the mess out of this thing. Like we... If it's a possibility that they could have an LGBTQ plus kid, it's like they get all giddy and they and they, and they, they force their will onto their children and they destroy their children. And these children, these adolescent children are making decisions to sterilize themselves, to, 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 well, to make it so that they cannot have babies for the rest of their lives. And these demonic parents should have a 500-pound ball wrapped to their neck and thrown into the deepest parts of the ocean. But before we get to that, I do want to say we missed it last week. I need to tell you uh, or ask you if you would please get involved. Um, Please consider giving this month. You can call the numbers on the screen. It is a toll-free number. Um, if they don't pick up initially, just just wait. Just hang out, you know. Uh, it's 888-459-5727. Call us, get involved, give a generous donation this month. You can also go to ZachDrewShow.com. Click the bright orange donate button if you want to give that way. Or you can write us at ZachDrewShow at P.O. Box 797, Decatur, Illinois, 62525. And as we're filming this, it is actually the 1st of September, which means all of you that belong to the Paul Revere Club, you were just issued your monthly uh, newsletter, uh, the Paul Revere Report, with a brand new episode of Peck Perspective. That's right. And uh, so listen, I also want to encourage you, if you want to do that, you can call 888-459-5727, join the Power of Your Club, or like I said, you can go online, but to do the online, to do the Power of Your Club, you got to click the store icon. So do that. And here is a one minute promo of everything you need to know about the Power of Your Club before we get into this uh, deep topic today. In a world where information is everywhere, How can we separate the signal from the noise? Introducing the Paul Revere Club, your one-stop destination for breaking news, current events, and cutting-edge coverage of the latest developments in science, technology, politics, and so much more. Signing up for the Paul Revere Club has never been easier or more affordable. For a monthly donation of only $30, you can unlock a world of knowledge at your fingertips. Simply call our toll-free number, 888-459-5727, and tell our operators you would like to join the Paul Revere Club. 
or go to ZachDrewShow.com. Click on the IGBY store, click the Paul Revere Club icon, and sign up today. To preface this, to preface where we are going on today's program, I want to lay the foundation I want, I want this article that we talked about a couple of months ago to be resonating in your brain through the entirety of what we will be showing you on today's program. Washington bill, there's the article on the screen, to allow medical transgender interventions on minors without parental consent. The Washington state legislator passed SB 599 in April of 2023, which allows the state to legally take children away from their parents if they do not consent to their child's gender transition surgeries. So not only do parents no longer have the ability to have authority over the medical decisions that their adolescent children are going through, they will lose custody of their children if they do not affirm and encourage the transition. That is where we are right now. Let's begin. There was a fantastic article done by Matt Walsh. Um, The article was titled, NBC's Trans Propaganda Accidentally Reveals the Horrific Truth About Trans Ideology. It says in the article, if there's one thing trans activists desperately do not want you to do under any circumstance, it's think back. Think back to what life was like before the rise of trans ideology. They need you to believe that before we allowed men to compete against women in sports and before every, you know, company in the Fortune 500 started spending hundreds of millions of dollars hiring demented activists with blue hair, the old world was a bleak hellscape. That's what they have to encourage you to believe, that children were killing themselves in mass because their subjective sense of gender identity wasn't being affirmed in this dark age of transphobia, which ran from literally the dawn of time until yesterday, middle-aged men went insane with despair because they couldn't cross-dress in front of toddlers at the local library. Law firms and consultants simply couldn't give good advice to their clients on account of the fact they didn't have any cross-dressers in leadership positions. Things, oh, were so very dire then. You know, in order for any sane person to buy into this narrative, it's vitally important that they not watch any footage from before the mass formation psychosis of trans ideology took hold in this country. So naturally, that is exactly where Mr. Walsh began, was with some of that footage. Let us move into this. Here, for example, is a report by NBC News from the year 2012 that was resurfaced this week by the popular account End Wokeness, and it quickly went viral. You'll see why. To me, it seems ridiculous to have a, a kid at age 12, 13, 14 deciding whether they want to have biological children when they're 20, 30, or 40. I mean, well, they make the decision to kill themselves at 12 and 13. That's a pretty powerful decision. We take an oath, first do no harm. If doing nothing is doing harm, you have to do something. That's a mainstream news anchor explaining that it's, quote, it seems ridiculous to have a kid age 13 or 14 deciding whether they want to have biological children. She's saying what most Americans would have agreed with at the time and still do, which is that it's crazy to administer cross-sex hormones, which sterilize patients for life to young kids who are barely teenagers. They are permanently forfeiting their ability to procreate at an age when they cannot possibly understand the implications of such a decision. Matt Walsh continued by saying just about a decade ago, it wasn't blasphemy to point this out. It was instead the default position of milk toast personalities on NBC News. Who was even talking about this thing 10 or 15 years ago? Who? What happened? What in the world happened? Right. I mean, this was this like, for example, like she could say this just 13 years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. What happened? Let me tell you just really quickly what happened. The awakening. This is from Illinois Family Institute. The awakening of the general public began to accelerate when the Obama administration issued instructions to U.S. schools that Title IX applied to trans girls. 
requiring schools to allow bi biological boys to play on girls' teams and use girls' facilities. While the Trump administration later rescinded those rules, the schools already were full speed ahead implementing the Obama administra administration's plan. The Biden administration is accelerating the accelerating the agenda even faster. So just so you know, this wasn't even a thing 10 or 15 years ago. It was because of Obama that this thing it has literally grown into something so disgusting and so nasty. And now we are demonized if we come against it in any way, shape or form. Let's go back to the article. You're not allowed to say those things anymore, and it's easy to see why. The doctor in that clip has no response except to say that children can kill themselves at that age. It's such a deranged answer that it's hard to know where to begin in responding to it. Now a person is capable of informed consent as long as they are physically able to commit suicide? What the heck kind of standard is that? Also notice how the suicide threat doesn't do anything to answer any of the objections of critics. Even if it's true that a child will kill themselves if they don't transition, and it's not true, there is no data to support this, and all of human history shows it's a lie, does that mean that a child really can consent? Does it mean that the boy really is a girl? Are we transitioning the boy because the claims he makes about himself are true, or are we doing it as a desperate last-ditch effort to prevent him from killing himself? It must be one of the other, or neither. It turns out that it is neither. Yeah, and what's insane about it too is bringing any of these concerns up is forbidden now. You know, you, you get censored. I've had entire videos pulled down, you have as well, um, because of exactly this thing. Sure have. Uh, you know, we, we've had shows recently that surprisingly haven't gotten censored yet that we thought we're going to, but this is another one. Except where, for on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, that, that got heavily censored. But uh, I imagine this will there too. But uh, we've had videos pulled down. So this NBC News segment is from 2012. So that's a little over 10 years ago. And it's terrifying to see how far society has fallen since then. I want you to take a look at this clip of a boy named Joseph Romero and listen to how he talks to his mom. Bioethicist Dr. Moon says the few studies that do exist suggest young kids with gender identity problems often grow out of them. A lot of those kids that start out as children who are saying I'm in the wrong body end up finding out by the time they're middle adolescence that they're actually fairly comfortable with their own gender. But Josie is not one of those kids. Or is she? Maybe I'm a boy inside and a girl outside. Really? Yeah, is that true? Only you know the answer to that. So. It was the first time Vanessa ever heard Josie sound uncertain. That poor kid is clearly, clearly confused. Yeah. Uh, he can't even keep the talking point straight because he's a child and he shouldn't have to. But it's, it's obvious that he's been coached because he says maybe he's a boy trapped in a girl's body, even though he has a boy's body already. He doesn't know how to think about himself and is uh, going by pretty much what his mom says. Yeah, and, and, and Munchaus and mommy mm -hmm. isn't going to let him. She has made that child a star yeah. in the LGBT it's too late, kid, is what she's saying. Yeah, and I, I absolutely do not believe, I have a hard time believing that uh, the mom, when she says, uh, this is the first time you're telling me any of this. Uh, I, I don't think no. so. Why, why is it when the cameras are on that this is the first time? Maybe he's always been ta talking confused like this, but this time there are other adults in the room, so she has to have an answer for it. She's performing damage control live on camera. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And, and to prove it here, I want you to watch this clip and decide for yourself if you believe this mom has never coached her child. And, and this and this is this clip right here. It broke my heart. Yeah. Here, watch this. So if you wanted to grow up to be a man, yeah. would you tell me? Mm, yeah. Hey, if you wanted to grow up and be a man, you could. I want to be... Sometimes I think I'm boy sort of, but I want to be a girl. Yeah. Would you love me if I'm a boy? Of course. I would love you no matter what. I always have, and I always will. I feel like maybe there's a part of you that's afraid to tell me what you really want. What if I said, oh, please don't be a girl? Well, I guess I'll be a boy. Um, no, honey. I need to listen to you and my mom. Well, yeah, you need to listen to me about 
you know, what's healthy to eat, and you need to listen to me about what time to go to bed, but you, you are the one. I have to listen to you. Yeah, well, if you said I need to be a boy, I mean, no. I have to. No. For her to have any indecision now, I don't know what it's rooted in, and I really need to find that out. Asking his own mom, Mommy, will you still love me if I'm a boy? Like, if that doesn't shatter your heart, and it's too late for this kid, it's been done. After examining Josie in private, Dr. Olson had a decision. You are in the perfect place to start on blockers. Josie received the blockers as an implant in her arm. It's okay if you cry. So with all the bravery she could muster, gonna feel a little bit of a Josie held on tight oh. as another chapter opened in this young girl's life. <laughs> a lot of times it strikes me that had this happened just 20 years ago, thank you, I wouldn't have been able to give her blockers and she would have had to go through male puberty. That terrifies me. It's all done. Do you want a hug? I don't know that she would have survived male puberty. Even if he d changes his mind, he will never be able to procreate for his one life. You know, this, this, is, this life we have, this isn't a dress rehearsal. This, is, this isn't a, a, a test run. This is your one life. And in his one life, because of his, his demonic mom, he will not, no longer be able to know the love of having his own children. Yeah, his, his one life has been sacrificed for the attention and social status mm. that the mother wants. And it's horrible. But to, to these activists that, that are pushing this stuff, none of it matters because, like Zach said, they sterilize the child anyway. And here's the sad thing. This was over 10 years ago. But unfortunately, there wasn't a huge backlash at the time from conservatives. You know, we hear conservatives speaking out against it now, but it could be too late because it's ingrained in our culture. It would have been easier to uproot this 10 or 15 years ago, but unfortunately, this is usually how it goes. A small social movement starts up and is ignored by the right because it seems small and insignificant. And that allows the social movement to grow and grow until it can't be ignored anymore. But by that time, children who were indoctrinated young are college student adults. Yes. And trying to change their minds is more difficult, especially when many of them have not been taught to listen and uh, to, to listen to reason and logic, but instead are applauded for putting their feelings first. So this could have been dealt with years ago, but because it was allowed to, it has grown to the point that now children are being chemically castrated and surgically hacked apart, and activists, so-called doctors, are leading the charge. In fact, oh. the doctor that was in that NBC News segment now runs a gender clinic in Los Angeles, and listen to what she believes and teaches. Well, I'm just gonna say this, that actually people get married when they're under 20. Actually, people choose colleges to go to. Actually, people make life-altering decisions in adolescence. All the time. All the time. And honestly, most of them are good. It's just the bad ones that we talk about. Oh my God, the cinnamon challenge, right? I mean, why do we know about it? Because it's, it's a thing and it's, it's, not, it's not common. Like most teenagers aren't eating cinnamon, right? But some are and they're on YouTube and that's stupid. But we don't put on YouTube the things that are really good decisions, right? Oh my gosh, my kid took the SATs. Not a very exciting after school special, right? But so what we do know is that adolescents actually have the capacity to make a reasoned, logical decision. And here's the other thing about chest surgery. If you want breasts at a later point in your life, you can go and get them. Obviously, this person should not be allowed anywhere around kids. Uh, Sick. It, it is. But this is what passes for a doctor these days. And her argument all of her arguments are really easy to pick apart. First, no one who has ever met a teenager or has been one themselves would think that most decisions teenagers make are good or right or informed. You know, she, she says uh, that you can, you can get breasts later after you've had them chopped off, but that's not the case. You can get a prosthetic, you know, much like if you have an arm or a leg chopped off, but uh, you, can, you can never get back your actual body part. She also says that taking the SATs is a positive, life-altering decision that kids make. But again, that's wrong. 
kids are told to take the SATs. Very few actually choose to do so on their own. And taking or not taking the SATs is nowhere near as life altering as deciding to sterilize yourself and permanently remove body parts. If SATs are comparable to gender transition, it actually only proves the opposite of what this woman is claiming. <laughs> it, 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 I know, it proves the exact opposite. It, it proves that these decisions are either forced on the children, yes. or at least there is heavy pressure from adults. So it shows, again, she has proven the opposite point that she was actually trying to make. That's good. And, and I... And I want to go back to the article now because it actually further illustrates that point you just made. Mm -hmm. It says here from Matt Walsh, trans activists often reveal truths that they wanted to keep hidden. This is especially common in documentaries like this one from NBC that show the child transition process. We all remember the clips of Jazz Jennings revealing his deep unhappiness to his mother. Or recall the HBO documentary called Transhood. The whole film was full of children who clearly didn't want to be a part of this gender cult. Here's just one profoundly disturbing segment from that documentary. Go ahead and play that now. Good morning. Good morning. Today we choose to recognize, honor, love, and celebrate anyone here who would claim their identity publicly as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning, intersex, pansexual, asexual, or any category that I've left out. <laughs> This is Phoenix. I'm really sorry. You're a little shy. Do you want to tell everyone if you're a boy or a girl? I just want to tell them that I'm a girl. Okay, you can tell them that. <laughs> okay. Phoenix would like you to know that she's a girl and she prefers she and her pronouns. This way. May you be well, safe, and whole. We honor you exactly as you are. So you saw that. The boy is dragged up on stage at the fake church to announce his fake gender, but he has no interest in being part of this spectacle. His mother is literally pulling him along by his hand, bringing him deeper into a gender identity that she picked out for him. These demonic parents, like I said, these clips that we're showing on today's program, it, this, this all just, it's a microcosm of a much larger problem. This, these militant left, they're having babies and they are, they are, it reminds me of the scripture, train a child in the way mm -hmm. They ought to go, and when they get older, they will not depart from it. Well, it, that's a spiritual principle. Right. But if you chain, train a child in the way he or she ought not to go, only by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit working in those people's lives will they ever depart from that either. Also in that same HBO documentary, we see a young child being recruited by his mother to become a trans activist. Even as the boy objects, objects in the documentary, and they left, they left it in there. And he says that it's ruining his life. Watch this. In BC, we're gonna, we're gonna be, and we're gonna be moving to the White House for Central Area to throw a book in Donald Trump's face. I don't think that we wanna say that, no. This one is Time to Thrive, and it's for people who work with LGBTQ youth. We actually go and meet with our senators and representatives. After we do that, we go and sit and sell some of Avery's books for a little while. Avery, manners. I just don't want to even have a book. I've done too much in this world. It's ruined my life enough, and now everyone in this world is going to know. If I sell my book, it's going to go on the news for like, with, along with me for like the 50th time at this point. And it's just going to make my life worse. A couple years ago, you wanted people to know. Yeah, I, now... I did, but now that was really stupid, silly mistake, and now I don't. It's ruined my life, he says. Keep in mind that these are the trans kids who they put on TV. These are supposed to be the mascots for child gender transitions. 
These are supposed to be the case studies that make the child's gender transition industry look good. And yet these kids are clearly in pain. They're confused. They want out. So what about all of those kids who aren't on TV? What about the ones who don't make the cut to be profiled by HBO or NBC or TLC? One of the cornerstone tenets of the LGBT, T standing for trans, movement is the indoctrination of children. I mean, look, I mean, look at this. I mean, Lego released a set called Everyone is Awesome, inspired by the LGBTQ flag. The A to Z of awesome with the tagline stating, this is the A to Z of awesome, a colorful alphabet of identities built from Lego bricks. Children, you know, do I, as a 32-year-old man, do I play with Legos? No, it's for the kids. And yet some of these letters you'll find in the Legos C for coming out or I for intersex, or L for lesbian, or N for non-binary, or Q for queer, to the kids. Once again, Disney president of entertainment wants 50% of all characters to be gay or un underrepresented, underrepresented. You know, I'm not even, we don't even have time to talk about all the inappropriate books in the children's libraries at their schools, or the drag queen story hours, or how about expanding sex ed? Here, we're in Illinois, uh, Illinois passed a, uh, it's SB 818, eight, SB 818. It's a massive comprehensive sex ed bill that expands sex ed to kindergarten. K through second grade will be taught about same sex couples and to define gender identity. Kindergarten through second grade, kid, people listen to this. Ages eight through 11 will be taught to define masturbation, homosexuality, bisexuality, cross sex impersonation, use of hormone blockers for children who pretend to be different sex and gender expansive, uh, expansiveness. Ages 11, an 11-year-old. 11 an 11-year-old 11 will be taught about oral and anal sex. It's like, like grandma, I'm sure you just went, oh, how could Zach even say that? They're saying it to your 11-year-old. If people like me don't tell you, then you won't even know what they're telling your babies. Am I just gonna say it's getting bad in the schools, it's getting bad in the schools, or am I gonna say, Grandma, they're teaching your 11-year-old about all forms of sex, because that's what they're doing. That's the hard reality. And you're not gonna be able to defend it. You're not gonna, they, 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 they're not gonna be able to defend it if you know the reality. And that's why, People are starting to wake up and moms and dads are getting kicked out of school board meetings because they're going to these board meetings simply, simply walking up to the mic, opening up the books, opening up the curriculum and reading it into the microphone. Saying nothing else, just opening it up and reading it. And they're being kicked out, escorted out by security. But he said, that's so inappropriate. And yet it's for the children. Florida LGBT group cancels pride parade after city says no kids aren't allowed. Why? Because Adolf Hitler put it at the annual Nazi party in 1935. He alone who owns the youth gains the future. So it's no surprise the progressive left is following that playbook, but they perverted it because they are all a bunch of perverts. They perverted it from the original context of Proverbs 22, 6, like we mentioned earlier. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. I'm going to end with this scripture, 1 Timothy 3, 1 and 4 and 5. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church. What am I talking about? You see, controlling the children of today allows them to shape the society of tomorrow. Destroying the family unit makes people resilient on big government rather than local communities. Family is one of the most fundamental systems of government ordained by God. Protect the children. Share this show like crazy. Tell your friends and family to watch this program.
Because even though they know what's going on, let them watch this program and let them listen and look at the children. Look into their eyes as you can see that they are being tormented. And yet half of the country applauds it. You should be thrown into the sea with a 500 pound stone and drowned. I, this show was just, I had two other topics that I was going to be talking about on today's program. And if I started reading through this material, I just, I said, but it, we'll, we'll, we'll use it another, another time. Yeah. It's about the kids. It's about the kids. Share this video. I know it was deep, a deep program today. Um, we love you guys and we'll see you next week. 